So we bought our fridge a long time ago, but we're finally actually putting it in the van and going to be building our first kitchen cabinet. So we went for the Dometic CRX65, uh, which is a fairly sizeable fridge. And we went for that because we think we're going to be living in the van full time. Sizeable as van fridges go. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but uh, no, it's a pretty decent little fridge. There we go. You can fit like a full four pointer of milk in there and it's got a removable freezer compartment as well. Like that, which is pretty handy. So yeah, this is where we're going to have it. And we're just going to build a little standalone unit, maybe with a little drawer above it as well. So we think it probably is best in that orientation. So that means when we're outside the van, we'll be able to still open the door, grab a cold drink or something, nice beer if we're outside. Yep. If it was here, if the door was here, then the fridge would probably come into the van a bit too far. So yeah. and it's this, quite nicely tucked away there, doesn't it? Yeah. On this side, we're going to be having our bench seats. So that's really the only um, orientation that that would work. So yeah, eventually it's going to have a nice little worktop on top of it and stuff like that. But um, for now, we'll just concentrate on the frame. Okay, so the first thing we've got to do is figure out exactly how we're going to build this thing. Because we've never made a kitchen cabinet, we've never made a cabinet before. We could do it stick built style, where we just have a frame in the corners with these battens. And then what we'd do is we'd put the face on it like that, with a piece of 6mm ply, probably. So that kind of construction going around. Or we could build it more like a traditional cabinet where we would have just a solid piece of wood, so this is 12mm birch ply, and then we'd join another piece of 12mm like that, and then it's flush edges everywhere. In the van, we've got weight, it's an issue, so that's quite heavy that piece, um, and space. And so, yeah, got to get the balance right with that trade off. Yeah, a bit of pondering. <laughs> <laughs> because we want the fridge to be sat out this way, we've got this little pillar here. So that would stop us from being able to put the fridge flush against the wall there. So, yeah, that's another thing to think about. There. And then you've got another drawer on the top. So don't judge me, this is very, very crude drawings just to start <laughs> with. It's like kind of like a normal cabinet that's been rotated 90 degrees to suit the van. Yeah, so normally at the front of a cabinet you'd have the toe kick but because of the way we're having it in the van, we're actually going to be standing here most of the time, getting stuff ready on the countertop there, so we need our toe kicker area here. So the plan is, at the moment, to have a drawer at the top for our cutlery and whatnot, then the fridge sort of in the middle, so it's a bit of a nicer height so that we can reach it, and then just to maximise on space, to have a drawer underneath it, and that that gets over the problem of that pillar which is jutting out here against the wall so the wall is there and what we would do is just inset this drawer a little bit it might work it might not we'll give it a go maybe <laughs> <laughs> One wall <laughs> of a piece of furniture. How's it going? It's really confusing. <laughs> because the cabinet is rotated, everything is slightly different from a normal cabinet. Um, and now we're just trying to work out what to do with the kind of kick plate area. It'll be a lot easier when we build these ones because they're obviously be the normal orientation. We'll just <laughs> use the back as the cladding and then build a cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> we started with the hard one. So we just realised we made a small mistake. Yeah. Which is a bit annoying. So when this board is actually at a right angle like that, it eats into a little bit of this space. That then means that it is now no longer wide enough for the fridge. <laughs> yeah, slight oversight because of the van being wonky again. So we're gonna to have to remake this one to make it longer, but we don't have any 12 mil left. 
So what we've decided is we're going to build a little stand, kind of like the, the kick plate part like you have in the house. We're just playing around with how high we'd have to go to completely clear that pillar. Um, and it's about that, which is 17 something centimetres yeah. from the floor. And we're going to build that separately and then we can screw that into the floor. And then we're going to build the top part, which is the fridge is going to go in and then screw that into that stand bit and also into the wall. So if that makes sense, hopefully that'll work. We've just come across a really irritating problem. The pocket hole screws that we have, we have loads of these ones, and these are the few samples that we got from Craig itself with the uh, jig. And obviously these ones are sticking out too far, and those ones aren't. Um, so yeah. Slight snag. And it's a Sunday, so I don't think we're going to be able to get any today, which is really irritating. So we've taken a break from the van building for a few days. We've gone down to Cornwall. We're on a nice coastal walk at the moment near Lizard. Are you currently thinking about fridge building? Not right at this moment, I'm not. <laughs> so it's a few days later now, we had a really nice time in Cornwall, but it's back to the van. <laughs> and since we've been away, the weather has turned really good. It's really nice and sunny all the time now. Let's make the most of it. <laughs> we've been using Baltic birch for everything so far in the van, but we couldn't get down to get any of that in time. So we, we just went to Wix and got a sheet of their um, normal 12 mil hardwood ply. This is the Baltic birch, which is really nice. The other one is quite inconsistent. It's kind of wavy in some places. It's got more layers than others and also comes up a tiny bit thinner as well, about 12 and a half mil and the one from Wix, just over 11 mil. So hopefully it's not gonna cause us any problems to do a bit of a mix and match. We're just starting to think about what color we're gonna paint our kitchen cabinet now. We wanted something that was gonna be a little bit more durable. What we've gone for is just some samples of Rust-Oleum kitchen cover paint, we thought if if anything's going to do it, that'll do it. And that says it's like scrubbable and washable and all that jazz. We were quite indecisive for the yeah. laundry, weren't we? Yeah, we thought we're going to be looking at this for a long time. So um, we want to get it right. So yeah, we'll put all those on now and choose. Who drink my tea? <laughs> Oh, it's put it aside. Got to order it. <laughs> we just added a little um, extra archway glued in here because when we cut this board, we we're a little bit too gung ho with the jigsaw and we cut a bit too wide. We realised you can actually see that from here. And then hopefully, when that's sanded and painted, you won't even know we did it wrong. There we go. That is our first cabinet <laughs> flat pack ready to go. You wouldn't think you would need so many pieces, would you? I think we might have a slight change of plan. Since we made the drawer a bit bigger to get around the little pillar in the van, it's actually big enough anyway to get in the right angle drill bit. I think we're thinking we might just make it all as one unit. I think we'll do that because then you can get it flush everywhere around, especially that corner at the back, make the toe cook kick look really good. Then we can finish it nicely as one piece. Yeah. So we're getting there. So the only thing left really for us to do before we can paint it and stuff like that is just got a few like little gaps and things like that. We're just gonna fill in with some wood filler. But what we have done in the process is made the holes for our wires to come up because we're gonna have a socket here. So we've made the holes here for our socket. And that's gonna be the back 
of the unit. We have also put some countersink drill holes in there so that we can reach in. Once this is all together, we can reach in from here and screw it to the floor. Um, and what else have we done? I've forgotten now. Oh yeah, we made these pieces across the top. This is where our worktop is going to sit on top of, so we just put those in as well. And then don't forget, we've also got to make some drawers. Oh yeah, <laughs> keep forgetting about that. <laughs> that does look quite funny. <laughs> I think that's it. Cool. It is now one unit. Okay, test fit. Let's see if it still fits. Pretty snug. Also. Awesome. And then this will be a nice work surface. And yeah, because we've got the toe kick, it's going to be quite handy because we can actually use this to cut your vegetables and stuff. Quite happy with that. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> okay, well, I don't think we're going to be able to put a drawer in there anymore. <laughs> We've made the unit as level as we possibly can, we think anyway. So then we have also filled all the holes. We have sanded it down. We've given it a hoover and we've given it a coating of white spirit as well, just to get rid of any last bits of dust. So I think we can paint now. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to put a layer of primer on first. We're going to use the Zinter bin again for that. Cup of tea. Thank you. We need one. <laughs> I think that's it. That's like a workout. <laughs> no gym for me this week. So I'm just giving it a fine sand with 320 grit sandpaper and it does make a difference actually. It's, it's fairly rough down here where I haven't done it and it's nice and smooth there. So um, hopefully it will create a nice smooth finish. <laughs> we'll put our next coat on in a minute and see what that does. So just to make our lives easier, it's just started snowing somehow. <laughs> even know where from. It's not ideal with painting conditions. Not really, we better get that inside. Yeah, tricky. <laughs> so it's pretty crazy how much thought has even gone into what type of draw runners we're going to use. <laughs> Do you like our little selection that we've got? <laughs> we're taking some back. <laughs> we never made a draw before so we're trying to figure out the best way we want to do it and we didn't even know exactly really different types of draw runners. In the end like we're choosing between these two different types. So these are like bog standard ones and they're pretty basic, it's just a mechanical construction with two rollers and this one's on the drawer and that basically just slides over there and in that. So the one drawback with these is... <laughs> you know I was doing that. The one drawback with these ones is that they don't open all the way and also they're a little bit clanky and noisy. Um, they don't take as much weight as well but for us it's probably not so much an issue. So then we're also looking at these ball bearing ones which are a little bit heavier um, but that's really nice and smooth applied. But the cool thing about these ones is it means that the drawer can extend completely out. And because again, we're in the van and space is like a premium, we want every space to be as usable as possible. So I think we've decided we're going to use those. We've got to make sides that are the full lengths of these runners. The height just a little bit less than this opening so it will glide properly. The width 
the full width minus the draw runners and then obviously the sides which is two pieces of our 12mm ply and we're going to build the whole thing out of the 12mm plywood with the bottom being six. That's what we think. Let's do it. So what we're going to do is just cut a groove, we're using 6mm birch pipe at the bottom, that should just slide in all the way around and then it should be really nice and strong and also make it a lot easier to glue the box together because all the sides will be kind of joined in. So luckily we've just finished cutting the last piece we need for the drawers because now it is half hail and half snow. <laughs> it's just started going down. April. <laughs> Where's our heat wave gone? Focused on here, yeah. <laughs> so we're at the point now where we're gonna um, dry fit our runners onto our drawers and onto our cabinet before we paint it. Just thought it might be a bit easier. So hopefully we should have about yeah decent clearance. So yeah. about six mil top and bottom. I think so. And it should glide smooth. help going in first time. Yep. This is good. Nice. Yeah. That is very satisfying. We have made some face frames for them and we did that with some 9mm plywood at the back and then we just put on some strips of 6mm on the front. They're kind of like faux shaker style. Um, we did that really just to save time and also on weight and things like that. So I think they're looking pretty good. We sanded them for a very long time. So oh, we've been sanding for hours. <laughs> yeah. So now we're just going to get on with painting them. So we decided to paint the inside of the boxes of the drawers and also all around the outside which if you're in the house I guess you maybe wouldn't do, just leave them bare. And we decided to do that because in the van we've got a lot of moisture from us breathing and the shower and stuff like that so we wanted to protect it because yeah, we've had some issues with mould on the plywood and stuff like that before. Um, and also we, because we might spill things in these drawers, we want to be able to have some kind of finish where it will easily wipe up. We've got the paint already so that's just a nice quick and easy thing to do. Hopefully it'll look quite nice as well and the white colour which we're going to paint them will mean that it's quite nice and bright so when we open the drawer we should be able to easily see what's in there, at least that is the plan anyway.
So we've just spent the morning just finishing up the last few little jobs. We have made these drawers sit as straight as they possibly can. We've also added this little adornment to yeah. the wall here because <laughs> uh, the angle of the van means there's a little bit of a gap. So we put that there because we're going to screw through the fridge, through the cladding and through into the uh, one into behind. The, yeah, behind. Just see it there. Looks like there's loads of wires for the fridge but these are for the for the socket and then going back to the socket around there and for the 12 volt and the AC. Oh yeah. And I think one's just a spare. Bring it towards me a bit. Nice. Okay. That is basically in place now, isn't it? Pretty much. Hopefully, it's not coming out again. <laughs> Abby's got the awkward job of trying to screw it into the floor. I'm just starting them off first with this baby one. <laughs> Ooh, try not to damage my cabinet before I've even used it. <laughs> <laughs> Questionable as to how straight those went in, but as long as it's in. So hopefully, if we've measured this right, there is nothing metal behind there, like another screw head or bolt. Yes! Nice. Let's get one more in the bottom and then it's officially installed. At least well, the cabinet is anyway, not yeah. the fridge. <laughs> the thing we've been waiting to put in for the whole thing, it's just been sitting there doing nothing. Lovely. Okay. Right, let's have a feel. Feels pretty solid, pretty solid to me. Pretty solid, solid. So now comes one of the more fun parts, that to choose our knobs. You've so been waiting uh, to put some of these in for ages, haven't you? Yeah, I have. Maybe that one goes a bit better. Happy with that? Yeah, not too bad, is it? So we've got the wire for the fridge coming out here, which is yeah, when we did our pre-wiring, we've already run this all the way to the battery, so that's good. So we're actually just going to take this one out, just unplugged it here, and we're just going to put some uh, spade connectors directly onto our wire and just plug that straight in. Just means a little bit less wired, a little bit less chance of having a problem with voltage drop from the distance we've got to the battery. I'm just going to connect R1 into the positive and negative on there. Okay. Okay, is that it? I think so. Don't forget the feet. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that should just slide in. Ooh. And the feet at the front. Something like that. Nice. Well, that's looking really good, isn't it? Not bad. Let's turn it on. Okay. So we've already got the wires from the fridge that we wired before and then we've got a 15 amp fuse as well that we'll just slot in there. But we're going to have to turn the lights off to be able to do this <laughs> first. And that one. Done. Ready, go. Okay, we have light. Oh, my knees. Oh, I can hear a fridge noise. Ooh, that is quite shape? exciting. Ready? Look at that. <laughs> Amazing! That is very cool. Literally. <laughs> oh, well, not yet. Actually. Not quite. <laughs> oh, that was a long day. <laughs> right, I guess we should better let this cool down overnight and uh, have a proper look at it tomorrow. So we'll just start with the drawers. We don't really know yet exactly what we're going to use them for, but we've just put some things in there just to demonstrate. So, <laughs> ta-da! So we'd never even designed it this way, but it turns out that you can actually get these tins in pretty perfectly, which is quite nice. That is ridiculous. And well then also the other way, which is incredibly satisfying like that. So that's good. And it also doesn't catch on our little trim here for our steps. So that's awesome. And then we've got the top drawer, again, not really sure what we'll use it for, but it comes out all the way. Got a little bit of pasture in there just to demonstrate, something like that, so which is pretty nice. So then, obviously we don't want these drawers to be flying out when we're driving around. So our aim is to secure them in place when they're closed somehow. We haven't done that yet, but we think we might use these little catches, quite strong. But we 
are yet to do that. That would either go at the front here or maybe at the back. So that's that. So the fridge doesn't sit all the way back in this cabinet. There's quite a big cavity behind it for ventilation for the hot air that comes out. Um, and also there's a hole in the side wall here that's comes up uh, through there and this way. So hopefully that'll be enough ventilation. Possibly add another extra hole here uh, if we feel we need that in the future because that'll be coming out of the bench seat. So we'll see how we get on. It's been cooling overnight and we've just put some more things in there as well just to show you what kind of things will fit in there. So we've got four pints of milk, a bit of wine, some orange juice and uh, yeah, a nice little salad crisper in there. And then we've got a freezer compartment as well. You can actually take this out completely if you want it just all fridge or all freezer. So we've just put a couple of things in there. <laughs> little bag of, peas. Yeah, the small bag of peas. <laughs> Essential for Tim. We have some peas. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're just trying some ice cubes at the moment. Oh, they're starting to freeze, look. So yeah, this can come out completely. Oh. There we go. And you change it with these little controls here. So, put that back. The way that um, this fridge is secured into the van, have these little plugs here. We've just taken one plug out, and it looks like you just have to screw through there, and that will screw into our cabinet walls. We haven't done that yet because you haven't got the right size screws, but we will do that before we drive off anywhere. So yeah, all done. I am happy. <laughs> we put it in properly, <laughs> make sure it's got the right angle. Yeah, there we are. So that's it, we've actually got a 3D object in the van, got an appliance in, so that's quite exciting. Finally. And uh, what are we going to do next time? Actually, I think we'll probably do the diesel heater, which we've got just behind us there. Mm. So, yeah, even though it's getting a little bit warmer, it'd be nice to have that in now. Yeah, it's been overdue for a little while, so get that done. Catch you next time. Bye. Bye.